living in this Verde Valley. Amen. I know it. And I want to meet them all. Woo! Yeah. Every one of them. I want the Buddhists that are in this valley, the Hindus, the Muslims. I want them to find Jesus, and they're only going to find Jesus if they find us. Yes. So, here's your assignment. Anywhere you go in this Verde Valley, if you see someone and you think they're not from around here, <laughs> okay, <laughs> number one, embrace them. They don't look like a redneck. <laughs> yeah, clearly not a redneck. They must not be from the Verde. <laughs> No, you figure out where they are and you tell me. Amen. Because I want to go find them yes. and I want to become their friend. Yes. Because how are they going to find Jesus as their friend if they don't find us first as a friend? Yeah. So when you're in a restaurant and you're getting some food and it's really spicy, different than you usually get, figure out your waiter's name. Yeah. And you tell me, you come up to me next Sunday, you can start. And start telling me where I can find the nations in the Verde Valley. Because God's heart is for the foreigner. Yes. You read Exodus, you read Leviticus, you read Deuteronomy. God's heart is for the foreigners among us, and it's our responsibility as the body of Christ to welcome them in. Otherwise, they will never find Jesus. And wouldn't it be a tragedy for somebody to move 10,000 miles around the world to live here among us and never find our best friend? That's right. Never find the hope that is in Jesus. Whose responsibility is it? Ours. It's ours. And I'll make it mine. You tell me where they are. I'll go eat whatever they're serving. And I will find a way to be friendly. So now, how many of you will help me? Yeah. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Three more. Okay. Three more. Three more. I will need your help. I want to introduce your speaker. The man that's going to speak to you this morning... He and I, this past year, have fought some battles together. Together. We stood side by side in some trenches, and we fought some battles for people. And praise the Lord, they were successful. So this, the man that's about to speak has a heart for, he loves pastors, his heart breaks for pastors and for churches. He is a shepherd of shepherds, and it's my pleasure to ask Pastor Steve Harris to come share the word this morning. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. I'll get my microphone up here in a moment. What a privilege it is to be with you today. I consider it a great honor to be with you. To share the gospel with you. Uh, to also, I've never heard it called induction before. <laughs> a new term. I we're calling it internment. So <laughs> not an internment. Um, we've been calling it installation. <laughs> However, some people say you install carpet, you install cabinets and appliances you don't install pastors so anyway i'm betwixt so this is celebration yeah. Yeah. Um, your pastor could be the pastor of this church without me coming here so i want you to know that it's not about me it is about the lord jesus christ yes. but it's good to recognize the authority it's good to be under authority, and it's good for me to come as the district superintendent or the bishop of our state. Americans are always behind. The whole, the whole world calls us bishops, yeah. but except America and Canada. So, but um, as a bishop, I come today just to recognize what God has done. Amen. To acknowledge it before him. Yeah. And to give our blessing. So your pastor has been appointed by God. Amen. And will be anointed by God. Amen. Or has been anointed by Amen. God in order to do this work. Because we can't do this. And Ryan knows that. Kelly knows that. We can't do this. We're human beings. 
We can't do it without God's help. Yes. Right. So even the Bible says that the one that speaks in 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 11, it says the one that speaks should speak the very words of God. Yeah. So I'd like to attempt that this morning. <laughs> Not everything that's said from a pulpit is the word of God. <laughs> and sometimes we meddle and sometimes we take bunny trails so you forgive us for all of that, right? Uh, but anyway, we, we will attempt this morning to preach God's word, to share the word of God with you, to bring a challenge to you, as well as some encouragement to you to acknowledge what God has done in your midst. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we take just a moment to bow before you and to give you praise yes, and give Jesus. you glory. Hallelujah. We worship you today, yes, God. We're nothing without you. Yes, Jesus. And we praise you for our salvation. Yes. We thank you for the cross Hallelujah. and your precious blood. Thank you, Jesus. I just rejoice this morning in this, in this place today and give you praise. And just ask you that you would bless our hearts. Yes. We pray that the word that is spoken today would touch every heart and every life. Jesus. Every one of us have needs. Every one of us need encouragement. We need assurance, yes. and we pray, Father, you'd give us a promise this morning, and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. So I have been doing this job <clears throat> for 25 years, and uh, I started out as a child. Uh, in this job. <laughs> I felt like I did. <laughs> um, what would have been my mentor passed away in 1995. That would have been Robert Seitz. And he was a great man of God. Uh, very bold in his approach to pastors. He's a, such a good man and I love him. So I didn't have him to talk to because he passed away. And then Brother Jones was my predecessor. He actually did not want that job in the first place because he retired, but he took the job because Brother Seitz died. And then when he was done, he was really done. Yeah. And uh, he really didn't even want to talk about it anymore. So anyway, I felt like I was a child trying to figure out everything uh, that was going on in the superintendency. I still don't know it all. I can tell you that. Yeah, there's new things that happen all the time. But Okay. Um, I want to talk to you uh, this morning about David, not King David, but David, the shepherd boy. And uh, the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 78, and they may have it on the, the board there. Yeah, Psalm 78, um, gives a, the whole chapter gives a, a little chronology, not the whole chronology, but some chron chronology of Israel. And then he comes to uh, David, and he's talking about David. In Psalms 78, verse 70, he chose David his servant and took him from the sheep pens. From tending the sheep, he brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart and with skillful hands he led them. Yes. So I read this, I, I mean, I've read this uh, scripture many, many times, but when I started installing uh, pastors or acknowledging their their pastoral ministry, this, this verse of scripture just jumped out at me. There are several things in there that we will talk about this morning that God chose David and he made him the shepherd of his people. Yeah. So I relate to all of those things. Yeah. And he put him in charge of leading his people. So it's really important for us to see what God is doing in our midst. So God doesn't really change how he deals with people. Yeah. He dealt with David some, what, uh, 2,500 years ago. God's not changed, and neither have people. Right? People are the same. They're the same if you go to China or you go to Turkey or you go to Africa. 
Are you going to England? Or are you come to America? People are all the same. We have certain comfort zones and comfort values and things that minister to us uh, or help us, maybe I should say. So people haven't changed at all. But God hasn't changed, and he still deals with us in the same way. Yes. It's pretty incredible yeah. because he wants to touch our lives. He wants to minister to people. He wants to bring people into the kingdom of God. Yes. So church is his idea, and pastors are his idea. Hallelujah. And he gave some to be pastors, yeah. the Bible says. And he gave the pastors for a reason, to equip the saints, to bless the saints, to help the saints, to encourage the saints and help them to be in the ministry. Everybody here today is called of God to be in the ministry. Amen. Your ministry is not all pulpit ministry because that's going to be his job. Is his job. And Kelly once in a while, maybe. She's ordained. But everybody's in the ministry. Every, God is calling every person in this building yeah. to be in the ministry. If you accept Jesus, your personal Savior, He has a job for you to do. Right. Yeah. And I look back and I think, God, I prayed these prayers when I had little children. Help me to be a ministry to my kids. Yes. Help me to be an evangelist father, an evangelistic father. So you accept the role. You accept what God has put in your hands and your ability. And, and Moses had the staff in his hand. We know what his staff was there for because he was a shepherd. It probably didn't look like that one right there, but it was a staff that had a knot on the end of it. And it was a protection, but it was also a blessing. He walked with it. It, it helped him. And he said, God said, throw your staff down. He threw the staff down. And when he picked it back up, it was not Moses' staff anymore. It was God's Amen. staff. Amen. And whatever God has given you as an ability or what God has laid in your hands, put in your hands, because God said to Moses, what's in your hands? Yeah. Yes. And he said, a staff. Well, that staff was no longer Moses' staff. It belonged to God. So give whatever ability you have to God. Amen. And it won't be your ability anymore. It will be God's. Yes. It will belong to the Lord for the work of the kingdom of God. That's the first bunny trail. <laughs> Acts chapter 13, verse 22. I don't know when I got started, but that clock is probably not right back there, right? <laughs> it's actually stopped. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, uh, 13, verse 22. It says, after removing Saul, he made David their king. Don't you like how God interfaces the Old Testament and the New Testament together? Do you know there are 565 references of the Old Testament in the New Testament? If you take away the Old Testament, you know, you gut the New Testament. That's a good message right there. After removing Saul, he made David their king and testified concerning him. I have found David. Son of Jesse, yeah. a man after my own heart. Yes. He will do everything I want him to do. Thank you, Lord. I look at that particular scripture, and one of the things that sticks out so glaring to me is that he found David. Yeah. If he found David, if you find something in your house, you're actually looking for it, right? Yeah. Or you might find it by accident, but you didn't find it really by accident because you're emptying out a drawer, and this happens to me a lot. I did it this morning. <laughs> I was trying to find something else, but I found something that I've been looking for for a long time. It's been in the very back of the drawer, and I, there it is. I found it. It's a knife sharpener. <laughs> well, I wouldn't find the knife sharpener if I had not been looking. I wasn't looking for it at that moment. I was looking for something else, but I found that. Well, what, the point is, I'm saying to you, is that God is always looking for people. Yes. Amen. Amen. 2 Chronicles 16.9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the whole earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. The eyes of the Lord range, they go over the whole earth. What is He have eyes for. He's looking for people. Yes. 
And if God is looking for people, he's looking into my life. He's looking at me. He's looking at you. Yeah. He said, I found David. He was looking for somebody to take Saul's place. Yes. And he found David. Amen. I want to just encourage you this morning. The eyes of the Lord upon you. The Bible says there's nothing hidden before God. But what God is looking for is not looking for judgment. He's looking for blessing. Right. He's not looking to, to pound people. He's not looking to hurt them. He is looking to bless them. Even people who are living in sin, he's looking to bless them. Because he wants them to be delivered from the sin that destroys their life. Pretty incredible. I had a message this morning, a messenger from a man I really don't know. I think I met him years ago. But he said, would you please, Stephen, would you please pray for my son? He's on a 20-year journey, and he's in jail today, and he's a burden to my heart. So I text back, and I said, yes, I will pray for him. What's his name? His name is Kyle. Well, God has God has. Kyle on his heart and his mind and he's asking me to pray for him and lift him up and I know how to pray for a son because yeah. I've had a 20 year journey myself I want to encourage you this morning that God is looking if he found David he is looking he is looking for you he's looking to you to answer his call and say I will obey you Lord I will do this work Ministry is really just offering yourself to God to say, Lord, I will, I will do what you ask me to do. I, he's not asking you to do what you can't do. He's asking you to do what you can do. He, he says, what is in your hand? What is your ability? I found David. David's story is a great example of how God sees the invisible in our lives. So if you would have seen David, you would have seen this nice looking young man, but you would have seen that he's just a plain old human being dressed in shepherd's clothes and he smells like sheep because he stays out in the open fields with sheep. He takes care of sheep. And when you take care of sheep, you smell like sheep, right? And I don't, I've been around sheep, but they tell me they don't smell good. <laughs> um, so the, the point that I'm trying to make to you is that he sees an invisible character or invisible ability that we don't actually see. Right. So David was a shepherd boy, just a young man, maybe 13 or 14 years old taking care of his father's sheep. By the way, the hierarchy in the Middle East is that the oldest son gets the double portion. Why didn't God choose Abinadab, the oldest son? Well, I don't really know. He says he doesn't have the heart of a king. We'll read that in just a moment. But he did have all seven of his sons pass by, and the eighth son was not even there. And so... God put his hand upon somebody that was not likely. It has no reference to you, Ryan. But the reality is God sees who we are when we're even children to become what we are. And so he sees not David as the shepherd boy. And if you were looking at David, you would have only seen a shepherd boy, but God saw a king. Yes. Yes. That's why we must trust him and put our hope and our faith in him and obey him and surrender to him because he sees what we're capable of doing. That's right. I live in a world of uh, insecurity in a lot of respects. I, I'm, I'm almost 72 years old, and I shouldn't be that way, right? But there's a human weakness about us. Amen. We all have some human weaknesses, right? Yeah. And if I was left alone, I would do nothing for God. Because <laughs> I have no confidence in myself. I know, you're not psychologists, and I'm here confessing my weaknesses <laughs> to you. But I'm trying to tell you, human weakness makes no difference to God. Because God doesn't call us because of our 
ability. He calls us because of our availability. Yes. Yes. We give ourselves and say, here it is, God. Here's my energy. Here's my effort. Here's my tithe. Here's my offering. Amen. And I want to give you my energy. I want to give you who I am so that me use it. And who knows what God sees in you, even yet. If you're even retired, what God can do through you when you surrender to God. There's a lot of believers in this world, but not all of them make Jesus Lord. We make him our Savior. We accept him as our personal Savior, but not always do we accept him as Lord of our life. Because we continue to do the things that we were doing before. And it's a challenge. I'm not telling you it's all easy. It's a challenge to make Jesus Lord. And to make him the Lord of our life says, I will go, I will do, I will obey, even if it hurts. So this is a great story, because uh, he was not of royal birth. He was just a common person. But look about what David did in his lifetime. One of the greatest kings that ever walked the face of the earth set Israel on a course to be uh, a, the, a great nation for God. We know a lot has happened. But David, a shepherd boy, became a king. So here's a couple of things if you want to write them down. God found, God anointed, and God appointed. God found. So we talked about that. And God anointed him, and then God appointed him. I don't know which comes first, the appointment or the anointment. They kind of work together, don't they? So in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 6 through 13, this is where Samuel is told by God to go to Bethlehem, or Ramah, which is just outside of Bethlehem, and there he would find uh, the household of Jesse, and he said, I want you to go, stop your crying over Saul, and go anoint one of Jesse's sons. I think it's really interesting, and this is a good part of who we are, what we do, is that God wanted Samuel to step out in faith. He told him to go where to go, but he didn't tell him who to anoint. You don't always get all the information. But you will get the information if you step out in faith. And so he left where he was at. Actually, he was in Ramah. And he heads out to Bethlehem to find the household of Jesse. And he comes. They have a feast to prepare the feast. And before the feast, he wants to get God's business done. So he calls them in. And this is what it says. When, the, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab. And thought, surely the Lord's anointing, anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance. How true is that? We look at the outward appearance. But the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab. And had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by, and Samuel said, Nor, nor has the Lord chosen this one. This one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? I wonder if you have ever been asked by God to do something. You didn't get all of the information, and then when you got there and you started obeying the Lord, you still didn't have all the information, and you became doubtful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the great man of God, the great Samuel, the prophet of the Lord, had the same experience. One of the experiences that we have sometimes, we doubt if we're actually doing God's will. But Samuel, he says to Jesse, and I had this kind of ringing in my heart sometimes because I come to this place in my life lots of times and I, I think, did God, did you really say this? 
Did you really speak this to my heart? And I think that's what Jesse, or what uh, Samuel thought, and he asked, are these all your sons? Did I miss God? Yeah. So take heart. <laughs> Sometimes it looks like we know every, like the preacher, we know everything we're doing is right. Sometimes we don't. We're just stepping out in faith and asking God to bless our steps of faith. Amen. Amen. So you just keep uh, stepping out in faith and ask God what he wants you to do on a daily basis. Who you, he wants you to touch. I believe in accidental evangelism. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's not really an accident. But I kind of like that. I'm just who I am wherever I go. Whether it's a gas station or the grocery store or wherever I'm at. I want people at the gas station because I was who I am. A spirit filled believer. And I blessed people behind the counter and led them to the Lord later on. Amen. Amen. I did that at Safeway. The person that sold me donuts for years. I led her to Christ. I call that accidental evangelism. Yeah. Because I am who I am in the Lord. I'm spirit filled. I'm spirit led. I'm full of the word of God. You know why I know that? Because I pray every day and I read my Bible every day. Amen. You can do the same and touch people's lives and they will want to know who you are right. and what you do and you have an opportunity to share the gospel with them and love them in Jesus Christ and you will bring them to Jesus just like the woman at the well. They're waiting at the well, by the way. I call that my gas station. I call that my uh, grocery store or wherever I go, the lumber yard. I talk to people about Christ every place I go, but it's not in my first experience. Well, I took another bunny trail. But um, I just think that it's wonderful to trust God and know that he will lead you. So he said, no, we're not going to sit down until you bring David. So they sent for him and had him brought in, and he was glowing with health and fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, arise, anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Wow. The anointing changes everything, doesn't it? The anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's just not an oil in a Bible. It's, it's the presence of God that comes. When you have the, your hands laid upon you as a believer in Jesus Christ and they pray over you. The Bible talks about this when it talks about the gift that was given to Timothy by the laying on of hands and the blessing. So we believe in that. We believe in what we're doing. This is not some fictitious thing. This is biblical. It is, it is believable. That we transfer the blessing that we have to other people. Yes, amen. It's powerful. So when he finds David, he anoints him. Gives his special blessing to him. The anointing significant of the call of God on his life. And he takes him from the sheep pen. And he makes him the king of Israel. So another message entirely different message. How long did it take David to get to the, the throne? Yeah, it took a long time, didn't it? From about age 13 or so till about 30. Sometimes we have to wait on it, don't we? Be patient. Wait on God. He'll bring his blessing. He says to David in Psalms 100, and, excuse me, Psalms 89, verse 19. Once you spoke in a vision... To your faithful people, you said, I have bestowed strength on a warrior. I have raised up a young man from among the people. I have found David, again that phrase, I have found David, my servant. With my sacred oil, I have anointed him. My hand will sustain him, sustain him, and surely my arm will strengthen him. The enemy will not get the better of him. The wicked will not oppress him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down his adversaries. My faithful love will be with him. And through my name, 
his horn will be exalted. Would you notice in there how many times he says my, the possessive pronoun, my. God is saying, this is mine, I'm giving it to you. Here's my gift. What did he give him? My sacred oil. My hand, my arm. His hand is not a doubled up fist, but it's a hand of blessing. My hand and my arm will strengthen him. My faithful love. God says, my faithful love. Most people in the world today, maybe not in this room, but most people in the world believe that God is kind of like an ogre who doubles up his fists and slugs people and hits them and knocks them down and so on and so forth. That's not the God I love. That's not the God I know. The God I know is, he says, my faithful love will be with him. And through my name, his horn or his authority will be exalted. David did great things. I mean, if you just look at his exploits, and then if you don't only look at his exploits, but he had 30 faithful, powerful men. And what he did was to instill his authority and his blessing in the lives of other people. And so he had these 30 mighty men that followed him. I just think it's not what I do that is so important, but it's what, the, it, what people do that I, I give my blessing to, or I mentor, or I help, or I install. Um, I think it's important that we mentor other people, take somebody under your wing, Bless them, help them, speak to them, walk with them through their difficulties, love them. All of us can do that. I mean, it just doesn't matter how old you are. You can still, or how young you are, you can instill in the person the love of God that is in your heart, in your life. I just think through his name, what name? In those days, it was the name of Jehovah. It was the name of Yahweh. It was the name of all of the names of God. But in this day, we're living in a day where we know Jesus died on the cross. And there's no other name given among men whereby we might be saved. There's this powerful name of Jesus that we come to the God the Father. And he said, if, any, if you ask anything in my name, I will give it to you. So we have the powerful name of Jesus and the authority of Jesus comes with his name. Yeah. Don't you just love the name of Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So God has given you all these blessings, but particular, he is giving your pastor and Kelly giving you this blessing. I'd like for uh, Pastor Ryan and Kelly, to, if you would, just come. And uh, we'll take just a moment to read the Bible together. Anoint you with oil and pray over you. I'll read out of your new Bible. In 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, it says, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2, Care for the flock that God has entrusted to you, watching over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them, lead them by your own good example. Pastor Ryan and Kelly, I, I've said this for years, but um, it's probably the most important thing that you and I do is the example we are. And um, most of ministry is just showing up. <laughs> and what I mean by that is the faithfulness. People don't remember what you preached, although they might pick out one message that they thought you did really exceptionally well. 
But what they do remember is that you were there and that you loved them and you cared about them. Yeah. And it'll be amazing someday when you get to be old like me, <laughs> you'll have people come to you and say thank you. And you will have a lot of students who live overseas now that someday will come to you and say thank you. Yes. Thank you for being Jesus to me. Mm -hmm. Those things to me are more important than anything else we do is the example that we are to the people around us. And then the, the blessing. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive a crown, never ending, glory and honor. You will receive a crown. Thank you, Jesus. And the King James says that will never fade away. Yeah. So you will be honored by Jesus himself yeah. with a crown of glory and honor. Thank you, Lord. Or just simply surrendering your life to the Lord. So I want to give you a Bible, a new Bible. I know you have lots of Bibles. Good study Bible. It is the uh, New Living Translation. I don't know if you use it or not, but yeah. And it's a fire Bible. So about 10 million of these Bibles have been delivered to China. Um, we've raised a ton of money for fire Bibles uh, for that reason, so that people in the world, it's been translated into uh, about 70 languages. So it's being translated into uh, really uh, remote areas of the world where if they did not have a fire Bible, they would have no Bible at all. So I'm really thankful to the Assemblies of God who um, raised money, still raised money for fire Bibles. Just a moment here. I'll get your staff. I know he needs this, right? <laughs> so everybody knows generally what this is. It, it is a staff. And uh, I use it to represent the call of God to be a shepherd. Think about how many people in the Bible were shepherds that are were our leaders or we look at them as our leaders. I mean, it goes back to Moses and David and Jesus. Uh, he's the good shepherd, the great shepherd. So um, I use this just to represent the calling of God. And Pastor Ryan, I didn't call you here. I didn't call you at all, but I mean, we talked on the phone. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, but I didn't call you to be in the ministry. Jesus called you. Yes. Called you both to be to do his work. And then you've been called to Camp Verde to uh, be a shepherd, not just of this church, but a shepherd to this community. Amen. And um, I pray and believe that you look, look at it that way as well. So you have to allow your pastor to go outside the four walls of this church and to reach out beyond the, the, this confine here to reach to other people, to shepherd them. And there will be people that will consider you a shepherd but never come to this church. I found that in my, my uh, ministry. So I, I just want to give this to you today to, and ask you to accept the responsibility to be a pastor to this community, wherever it is, even on beyond uh, Camp Verde. So. And I brought one other thing, and it's anointing oil, and I just want to pray over you. Why don't we go down to the front, and let's have uh, your children come up. Liza, would you come up? I know you're not going to be part of the church, but I just want your family to come. Where's your son-in-law? <coughs> the kids? Or the kids, yeah. Yeah, should we make your brothers come? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. 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 Your sister. Make your sister oh, yes. come. Yeah. 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 The better the, the
taking one of the family, right? Absolutely. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so you guys come forward a little bit so they can actually get behind you. And I'd like for the board members to come. Here, oh, you're on the air. <laughs> Uh, this is a very sacred moment in my mind with this. The sacredness is that we don't take this lightly. We're just following the scripture of what happened. Well, forgive me, we don't pour a whole bottle of oil on top of them. Because it's what happened in the Old Testament. Uh, but it does say, anoint them with oil, lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. Many, many scriptures go through that. So what we do today is just... We just believe that God honors when we do what he says to do. And I want to I want to bless this family because how important this church is and this ministry is in this valley. And the life that comes from this place is so important to the rest of the world. There are so many people that are lost out there. And how important this body of Christ is to him and to his work, to his ministry. And he's laying his hand upon these people to lead this congregation and to lead this community. Would you stand with me? And would you reach your hand in this direction? And let's pray. Let's pray over them today. Heavenly Father, thank you for telling. I lay my hands on her. Thank you. I do this in the name of Jesus. That she may accomplish the work that you have sent her to do with her husband. Yes, Thank you, Lord, for the union of these two people. Hallelujah. And we just bless them today you, in the, in the wonderful you. name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would, name. you would fill Hallelujah. Kelly's heart and mind yes. with dreams and visions. Thank you, Thank and you, as they Lord. work together as a couple, as a one unit, yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for her counsel. I thank you for her prayer. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for her support and for thank you, Jesus. and her obedience to you, Lord Jesus. I just bless Kelly in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord. God, I thank you for Ryan. Yes. I just lay my hands upon you, Lord. That the anointed blessing of the Lord may be upon him for this work and for this kingdom. You have appointed him to this place. Yes, you have appointed him to be the Glory shepherd to God. of this valley. And God, I ask you to bless him. I pray yes, that you would Lord. give him influence. I pray that you would give him a favor. I pray that you would yes, give him Lord. so many open doors. Thank you, Jesus. So you would take time to go through them all, Lord. Yes, Lord. I ask you to lead, Ryan, Lord. How may he lead with vision and with dreams. I pray in the Hallelujah. name of Jesus. I pray that you would watch over the Rivals. Yes, Lord. I pray, Father, for this anointing to rest upon them. Yes, oh, Lord. God, that would be a protection to them, Thank Lord. You, I plead Hallelujah. the blood of Jesus over yes. their lives. And God, we rejoice. Hallelujah. Help us to see the invisible. Mm -hmm. Help yes, us all Lord. to have this kind of holy vision. Yes, Lord. The vision of our heart, Lord, the vision of our faith. God, we give you all the glory and the praise. And Lord Jesus, I thank you for every member of this church, every person that calls this place their church home. I pray blessing upon them today. I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit rests on every person. If there is any here this morning that do not know you, have not accepted you as Lord and Savior, I pray that they would do it right now. Thank that you, they would Lord. accept you Hallelujah. and receive you, Lord Jesus, into Thank their lives. And make a commitment to follow you. And God will give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Would you give the Lord a, a clap off of the praise and praise?
Thank you all so much for coming today. But you can't go yet. Now we tried something new. I don't know if it worked or not, but we're having offering at the end of the service. Oh, oh. <laughs> but it wasn't really planned. <laughs> we were just too excited. So uh, I'd like the ushers to come forward, please.